step into the world of drama and emotions with a classic TV series from 1968. This show has stood the test of time, becoming a symbol of the industry's strength. What makes it last? Well, that's something to think about. Featuring a cast of well-known actors, you might find yourself picking a favorite. Who stands out to you? Share your thoughts below. The series is filled with moments that will keep you hooked, so stay tuned. Now, what qualities make this TV series a symbol of the industry? It's a journey through emotions, relationships, and human experiences that captivates viewers over and over again. As you watch, think about your favorite memory or experience related to the show. We'd love to hear your stories below. Your connection to the series adds to its legacy. So, keep watching for surprises ahead. Don't miss out on the drama that made this show a classic. And remember, your stories matter. Share them below. What's your favorite moment? Who's your favorite cast member? Engage with us. This is your chance to be part of the conversation. Stay tuned for more and join the journey. Premiering in 1968, the TV show drew in audiences with its engaging storylines and relatable characters. It quickly became a favorite in households across the nation. Viewers tuned in daily to follow the lives of the residents of Landview, becoming deeply invested in their triumphs and tribulations. During its time, the show was praised for its groundbreaking approach to storytelling, addressing social issues such as racism, addiction, and class struggles. Its willingness to tackle these topics head-on resonated with audiences and earned it critical acclaim. The show's impact on popular culture was significant. It inspired spin-offs, expanding its universe, and keeping fans engaged beyond the original series. It also spawned a range of merchandise, allowing fans to further immerse themselves in its world. Despite ending its run in 2012, the show's influence continues through its dedicated fan base and continued influence on the soap opera genre. Its memorable characters and compelling storylines continue to be celebrated by audiences old and new, ensuring its place in television history. In the world of TV and stage, a familiar face from the 1968 TV series took on diverse roles. He was also known for his work as a professor at Howard University. Over six years, he led the Department of Theater Arts, guiding aspiring actors. In one notable instance, he was set to play Red Salter in Cool Red, but had to step back due to illness and other commitments. The role was then taken over by Greg Morris. Beyond TV, he showcased his talent in theater, filling in for Sidney Poitier in the stage version of Lilies of the Field, titled Look to the Lilies alongside Shirley Booth. Despite its short run, his performances left an impact. Throughout his career, he left his mark not only on screen, but also in academia and theater, shaping the next generation of performers. In 1979, a really important episode called Karen Takes the Stand was a big deal on the show. It was so shocking that people still remember it today as one of the most memorable moments on daytime TV. Judith Light was amazing in it and even won a big award for her acting. There was a big change in one of the characters, Blair Kramer, in 1991. She was originally played by Mia Korf, who is biracial, but then a different actress, Cassie Wesley DePeva, took over the role and the show didn't really talk about Blair's Asian background anymore. Some fans thought one of the characters' middle names might be Irene, but the show never said for sure. This added a bit of mystery to the character story and gave fans something to talk about. These things show how the show handles big moments, changes in characters, and keeps fans interested with a bit of mystery. Set in bustling New York City, an American daytime soap opera recently concluded its run, marking the end of an era. The show, taped in the city, created memorable characters and storylines that captivated audiences. One character, Jack, played a significant role in the drama, adding depth to the storyline. Another character, Kelly, originally meant to be older, was reimagined as a teenager, changing the direction of the plot. The series, with its rich character dynamics and unique setting, became a memorable part of soap opera history. Its final episode served as a reminder of the changing landscape of daytime television. In the DVD commentary for Dr. Horrible's Sing Along blog, Nathan Fillion reflected on his time acting on the series. He pondered, the only question you have to ask yourself is how good a Joey Buchanan was I? A man's butchanity is what separates him from reptiles and lawn furniture. Judith Light met her husband Robert Desiderio on set. They are still married to this day. In 1996, ABC Daytime released a tie-in book called Patrick's Notebook Words of Love from One Life to Live. The book was purported to be the favorite love poems, photos, and secret thoughts of the character of Patrick Thornhart, played by Thorson Kay. It also includes an audio cassette of Patrick reading selections from the book. 
Al Freeman Jr. transitioned to teaching at Howard University, where he held various positions in the Department of Theater Arts. He instructed courses such as speech for the microphone and acting for TV and film alongside serving as Chairman Artistic Director for six years. Notably, he resided on a boat along the waterfront in Washington, D.C. Brian Kerwin garnered acclaim for his performance in Edward Albee's The Goat or Who is Sylvia at the Mark Taper Forum in Los Angeles. His portrayal received rave reviews in February 2005. The production of One Life to Live set a record with the creation of the Great Hall of Eterna in 1988. This massive set, standing 32 feet high and spanning 360 degrees, surpassed any other set built for a daytime drama. Its scale was so immense that it necessitated construction in a separate studio from the show's usual taping location. Across the decades, a certain TV show had some truly memorable moments. Back in 88, during one storyline, they brought in real well drillers and equipment, making it super authentic. Originally, the show and another one were only 30 minutes long, but they stretched them to 45 minutes and 77 to save money. But that didn't work out, and within a year, they were both bumped up to a full hour. One actor, Erica Slezak, won six daytime Emmys for playing the same character, which is a big deal. These achievements show how much of a mark the show left on TV storytelling. In the realm of television history, a certain character holds a significant place. Portrayed by Ryan Phillip, he marked a groundbreaking moment in the SAS TV landscape. This character, along with others, contributed to the rich storytelling of a popular soap opera. As the show transitioned to a new studio in Manhattan, its essence remained intact. Despite the physical move, the drama continued to captivate audiences with its compelling narratives and beloved characters. The show's impact on television remains undeniable, celebrated through its dedicated fan base and the courage it displayed in its storytelling. In the world of daytime TV drama, Al Freeman Jr. made history by winning the first Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series in 1979. He played Lieutenant Ed Hall in the series and left a lasting impression on viewers. Freeman's acting talents weren't limited to TV. He also won an NAACP Image Award for his role as Malcolm X's mentor in Spike Lee's movie. Malcolm X's performances showed his ability to play different kinds of characters, which audiences appreciated. In the series, one character affectionately called his daughter Shorty, which added a nice personal touch to the story. This nickname became an important part of the show, showing the strong family bonds between characters. Al Freeman Jr.'s work as Lieutenant Ed Hall and his historic Emmy win influenced daytime TV drama. He was a talented actor who could play many roles, and his performances had a big impact on audiences.